Our next guest is Mickey Doubly. He helped set this up. Mickey, we know him for many years, KO Dynasty, and then for a few years, hadn't heard of much of what he was doing, but apparently he was uh, creating wealth for many people, and now he's tying that back in with mixed martial arts. So pay attention, young fighters. If you want somebody to advise you in a, in a different fashion, you can get free managerial, uh, or free, 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 um, you can have a manager who will work for you for free, but at the same time, um, where he, where you and him can do some businesses, he will build your wealth, your capital. So it's an interesting twist there. Welcome back, Mickey. How you doing? Great to have you, man. I'm doing, I'm doing great. How you guys doing? Good, good. Uh, hey, th help. Uh, thank you very much for helping to set this up. All the guys have been outstanding. They all have a really, real cool story. They all have great personalities. A few of them have fights coming up. And, man, the coach is really deep here with his thoughts. So uh, I, I've really, really enjoyed having this visit from the team body shop. It's great to have actual professionals. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, I mean, you guys came out with when I came out back in 08. You know, and you guys have seen the sport evolve, um, you know, just as, as I. So it's really good to see guys being professional. Get them some coffee, too, by the way. Yeah, for sure. We got a Starbucks nearby. We can definitely, we can definitely do that. Uh, we actually have a Keurig that sits there, and I think Ghost took it back home to what? We had to clean it, clean it out a little bit. Yeah. So, you guys, coffee drinkers? I am. Yeah. Yep. Oh, we'll, we'll get you some before you roll up. Uh, so, Mickey, did I describe that right? Basically, you're looking to um, to yeah, I mean, what partner up. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean that was the original idea, and that's the original idea I contacted Stephen about, and, you know, the idea was very, very new, fresh, and it, it kind of, I think the, the story got very twisted, but at the end of the day, the response was tremendous, and what the fighters were asking me over and over and over is, hey, can you just manage my money and not, you know, manage my fight career, mm -hmm. and that kind of sparked another idea, and said, you know what, you know, the fighters are really asking me to just help them with their finances. Maybe I need to just focus on the finance side. And it wasn't, I wasn't trying to pull fighters away from management. That wasn't my intention because I know I was a manager myself for 10 years. I know fighters have relationships with some managers, some good, some bad. I wasn't, that wasn't my intention. My intention was, hey, I have my proper licenses to be, uh, you know, a registered investment uh, consultant. And I've been in that business for 20 years. Um, I'm really just trying to bring the aspect of the financial fundamentals to the fighters because they're making a lot of money and they're not getting the proper advice. There's no platform on what to do with the money. Mm -hmm. So I went back to get my proper licenses in order to advise the fighters. And Antonio was uh, one of the ones that recognized it. And, you know, I look at his situation. You know, he's a coach, he's a manager, he's a trainer. You know, he sees the benefit of bringing in somebody like myself to his team to sit down with these guys and teach them the basic fundamentals of money. They're young, they're making fast money, and as Antonio has seen, with some of the fighters I've managed, these guys have made a lifetime of money to retirement on and pissed it away. So we're really trying to work with more of the coaches, the trainers, the managers, the fighters, and I think... The, more, the managers will be more on board, the coaches will be more on board, understanding that, hey, I'm not trying to come and steal your fighter. That's not my intention. Can I negotiate a contract? I can do it, no problem. But where my, I guess, piece in this MMA industry is going to be the guy that brings the finances to these guys and get them to open their eyes to start investing because they're not the average age of a financial advisor is usually around 60 uh, 65 years old. They don't know what a UFC is. They don't know what MMA is. And these fighters are not going to feel comfortable. Why not work with a guy that's been in the cage, that's it, that's helped a lot of fighters in the past? Why not help you know work with a guy like me that has the connections and knows the fighters and, and has the experience in the industry? Yeah, and we were talking about that yeah. earlier. A lot of people have made a lot of money. A lot of pioneers yeah. have made a lot of money, and not all of them held on to it um, because you can't fight forever. And when you do get a ton of money really quick, that's when the hangarounds come up and they right. get a piece of it here and there. Um, Mickey comes with credentials, and so now at least it's worth the conversation to see what he can do to help. How, how did he, uh, I guess, what caught your eye, Antonio? Of well, his, I've watched his pitch or, or his idea. No, I, he didn't have to pitch it to me. I mean, I watched him. I kind of played, you know, I'm pretty good on character. He's been always a straight up guy. He's, 
his due diligence to work hard. And so uh, I think it's, it's like the greatest thing that could ever happen. He And, you know, I always say things like it is. He was managing Emmanuel Newton, and Emmanuel Newton, I was training, and you watched Emmanuel make over half a million dollars, and to this day doesn't have a dime. Absolutely nothing. And I think that even inspired Mickey even more so, like, wow, man, look at these guys. If they just listen. And so I think it's great because the way I saw it is once he comes on and he takes a percentage of that fighter's check, and he's able to put that money to work for these guys, these guys will at least have something in the end. I'd like to see a package put together for MMA fighters. And it's mostly the guys that are not that good that create the champions. Because those are the guys that take the beating. You know what I mean? The best is the best. Um, and then when you get at that other level, who's telling you what to do with your money? Because, you know, fighters, whores, strippers, fast-paced life, drugs, that's the fighter's life. Now, at least on the back end, Mickey sets up a portfolio for these guys to be able to say, hey, I've got residual income coming in every month because I put money away. Because most of these guys, they get their checks, they don't even pay taxes on it. They have no idea. What's the first thing that fighters say to you when you meet with them, Mickey? When it comes well, to money, I guess. You know, when it comes to money, it's, you know, they just want to know, what, what do I do with my money? I, I've always wanted to invest. I just don't know what to do. And then, you see, you look at a guy like Antonio that can go and he, they can teach them jujitsu. He can manage him. He can train him. He can handle that aspect. But Antonio doesn't know how they, what they need to do with their money. And I can't go to that gym and teach these guys jujitsu or boxing. They get their ass kicked. You know, so... My, you know, it, it's really, it's such a, a, a hunger for what, what do I do with my money? Because how many times have we seen these young fighters, they have 40 bucks in their bank account, all of a sudden they win fight of the night, they get their Reebok money, they get their show, they get their win money, their discretionary money, now they got six figures in their account, they're in their young 20s. Antonio's not going to tell them what, he doesn't know what to do. These, these managers don't have the proper licenses to advise people what to do with their money i do you have to have uh you know you know you have to have regulations in place and licenses in place to even discuss about investment and, and this is a huge thing missing from the sport because as we see it we see older fighters now coming back to fight because they didn't do the right thing and i really feel where you know where our strength is is going into these gyms doing a seminar, feeding the fighters, and really sitting down and teaching them the basic fundamentals of fighting. So, you know, you can have your, you know, your little party money to do whatever you want to do, but take the bulk of your money and put it away so you and your family can be can be set for the life. You're, you're, you're taking a beating on your body. You can't do it forever. So at least invest now, because once that money is gone, now what? I'm from California. All I ever knew was real estate, but all that other stuff where people can become millionaires and shit, and stocks and bonds, I never learned about that. You know what I mean? And when I try to, it looks like another language. I don't really get it. <laughs> Mickey, well, how that's, why have some, that's why you have a guy like me. Yeah. How different is everybody's path, uh, fighter-wise, as far as investments? Does everybody have, kind of have their own personality towards that, or is there somewhere that you push them all towards? They all, uh, they don't have any... They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. They all just know, hey, I need to invest. They, everybody everybody thinks investing is a wonderful idea. You talk to any of the fighters or anything, everybody will agree with you. Yes, investing is great. Yes, investing is great. It's almost like, you know, everybody wants to win the lotto, right? But they don't buy a lotto ticket. So if you don't actually put money into investing, it's never going to work for you. It's a great idea, but you're not doing it. And sometimes people don't know what they should do. People feel uncomfortable walk into a, a, an investment firm and some 60, 70 year old guy sitting there and they're thinking like, uh, there's no, they can't really relate to, the, to that fighter. On um, my instances, I, I, I got my license when I was 20, I think 21. So I've been in the business for a very, very long time. And I also, my path brought me through the MMA industry. And I, I have that rare, rare form of the knowledge of MMA and the connections. And, you know, Antonio, obviously, he really tells it how it is. Let me jump you in know, here real so quick for just a second. Sure. Um, I'm going to exit real quick to our SiriusXM audience uh, and let them know, SiriusXM audience, 
more combat sports headed your way like the Luke Thomas show busted open at the fights and MMA tonight. We